And welcome back to... No. No, 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 no. No, it's the same video. It's the same video. It's just dark outside. We cannot continue working on the roof at the moment. But we've got... We've got... Got more things to do here in the cabinet. Oh, nice and bright. I'm actually... It's a bit too dark. I'm actually using the time now, while the sun is not shining outside, to replace the fuses over there with the circuit breakers. For two reasons. I don't want to do it during the day, because, well, we've got 110 volts DC on these cables. I would need to go onto the roof and disconnect the solar arrays. Just pull the cables, the MC4 connectors. And then I could safely um, safely replace the fuse for the circuit breakers. Reason number two, I'm losing capacity, I'm losing charge, I'm losing power during the day. Well, it could take half an hour to replace these fuses with circuit breakers, potentially even longer if we run into any problems or so. And you know, an hour could be a lot during the day. So anyway, I'll do it right now. It's safe to do. I don't need to disconnect anything. I just can turn off the solar, disconnect all the cables. There will be no power on there anymore. We just get it done. I'm going back onto my, onto my paint bucket here. That makes me a bit taller. So what I'm trying to do is I will reuse all the cables up here. Um, I'm not putting in two circuit breakers. I'm using only one. Well, guys, just this one, you know, 25 amps for both strings. So I am combining, I'm combining the positives and the negatives into one circuit breaker. Because if you have seen the last video, we have done the test with the clouds uh, because people were under the impression you need a diode in between your strings. So power does not go from your unshaded cells into the shaded cells, which I disproved it is not happening. Even the cells which are shaded are still producing power to the system. So we can just combine these cables into one circuit breaker now. I will also try to reuse the cables down here so I will parallel them up. Uh, this is four millimeter, four square millimeter cable here. If I can, I leave this all in here. I just need to rearrange this one a little bit. And then I have just two four millimeter cables in parallel supplying my solar power into the solar charge controller. So I don't want to muck around here and cutting the cables off and putting new um, um, boot laces on and everything. So I leave this all as it is basically and just double up the cabling. That's a theory. Okay, it shouldn't take too long, but you never know. You know, you're running into problems and then it takes just a long time. So I'll start right now and see how far we come. I will definitely measure the DC anyway here. Oh, we've got still 12, 13 volts on there. That is interesting. Is this coming from the outside? No, I can't. It is pitch black outside. Let me try this again. Oh, we've got only two volts here. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Now I've got four volts. Huh? I'm on DC? Yes, I am. You cannot see it anyway. Why don't you say anything? Okay. I'll measure again here on the charge controller. 2.5 volts. Okay, I'm closing the fuses again for the charge for the solar and measure again. We've got 13 volts. Where is this coming from? Okay, open these again. Just one, one string. 4.8 volts. That is funny. Each of these strings delivers 4.5 volts still. Nah. Okay, I probably isolate. <laughs> we can now isolate the charge controller. There you go. And I'll measure again and see if there's anything on there now. Still 4.5 volts. I've got both strings connected. 4.7 volts. What the heck? Where is this voltage coming from? Okay, and anyway, I've... What's going on? 
Let me just keep disconnecting everything now and get this replaced. So. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, this bloody inverter just scared the shit out of me. It took, the, the pump turned on, the irrigation pump turned on to uh, supply more pressure to the system and everything. The inverter kicked in, the fan came on, these fans came all on, and I was here just connecting the cables to these breakers here. <laughs> and it was just, I said, oh God, what is happening now? <laughs> That's why you should turn everything off when you do electrical work, right? <laughs> okay, I think we got it now. So yeah, the cabling is not the best anymore now because some of the cables are a little bit too long here. But I'll fix this up later on once we got the other cables here as well. Then I probably recable everything. But for now it's good. It's actually good that you get two bootlaces in here at the same time next to each other and they are both super firm in there. So I wasn't quite sure if this works, but it does. So I've got them combined here at the top as well. Uh, this is our positive now and this is our negative part. And um, then we've got them paralleled up down here. Oh, they should be the same. No, they are a bit wider. Are they? Really? They should be the same. Wow, that is tight. It's good. I like it. But it's tight. Yeah. <laughs> In. All right. So this will be our east roof and this will be our west roof going to a different charge controller though because we've got a 150 volt DC on here and I cannot combine these solar cells with the other ones because this is only 100 volt DC and this is 150 volt, 140 volt actually. So just underneath the specs of the charge controller. And that's what the second one is for. So I probably mount this here straight underneath these cables. Because when I do the recabling, yeah, that's the space I want. That's actually not too bad. And then I've got enough space here for a third one. Stage three. Yeah, I I know these um, installations on top of the roof, you know, with the... Um, brackets and rails and everything. This is not the most interesting stuff and the most exciting stuff to watch. So I'm trying to bring some other stuff in here, share some thoughts about what I'm doing and why I'm doing things like this. And at least at the moment, <laughs> so far we have changed quite a lot in this year, in this cabinet. The charging test with the vehicle, I have touched all the contacts in here as well. So nothing got warm or something when we pulled the 60 amps and this was all fine. No problems with the bus bars at all. No problems with the charge control or nothing. So this is all working fine now. Okay, so we have now the isolators in there instead of the fuses. People have suggested it. I don't know if it's really necessary. I think the fuses are fine, but well, to make just this video a little bit longer here, the reason you probably should replace your fuses with a breaker is the breaker has actually two methods to turn off your circuit. One is if you have a short or something, if you exceed the rated current on the breaker, it triggers the electromagnetic mechanism inside and turns off the circuit. And this is pretty much similar to the fuses. If you exceed the current of your fuse insert, it will just disconnect. It will melt the wire inside and disconnect your circuit. Well, the other thing a circuit breaker does, it has a thermal disconnect mechanism as well. And this is pretty much like a bimetal inside the circuit breaker. And the current is flowing through the bimetal. If the current goes near the rated current of the circuit breaker, the bimetal warms up. And if you keep this maximum power for too long, the bimetal actually opens and disconnects the circuit as well. Well, these fuses, they don't do that. You can pretty much run them until they melt and you won't have any protection against that. So from this perspective, it's probably good to replace your fuses with circuit breaker at some stage. If you know anything else, please leave your comments down below why you should replace your fuses with 
a circuit breaker. Well, the, uh, the third one is, of course, if the circuit breaker trips, it disconnects positive and negative at the same time. These ones will only disconnect the string where the actual fuse melts, so the other one will still be connected. I don't know if this is important in case of a lightning strike or something, but I don't think the breaker will actually help with that either. You know, I got a good deal on these circuit breakers actually here from No Arc. It's a funny name, No Arc, right? No Arc. I bought them from um, Solar Mart here in Marlene in Queensland. So link is down below if you want some good prices for these breakers. So I bought two of them, two 25 amps for the solar input. And I have two 40 amps now here for these two solar charge controllers. And then we've got enough space here for a third one for the potential stage number three then. But I haven't got any solar panels at the moment, but I just need to look into Gumtree, which is our online portal here. And there are so many used solar systems on there for cheap. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 dollars. You name it, you get everything. Free solar panels inverter, rails, all the clamps and everything, all the brackets, everything included. You just need to go there and pick it up. Free energy, you know, that's free energy. Okay, uh, this has taken quite a while now because I'm talking too much, I know. So I probably put this as a separate video on it now. So welcome back to another episode here in the off-grid garage. <laughs> you get the intro at the end now. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here. And um, stay safe, stay charged, and we shall see us again tomorrow morning. We um, continue on the roof, stage number two. And then we can recable everything on Easter Monday, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. But we can do it next weekend or so then. So that's fine. Plenty of space, plenty of time, I would say. We get this done. All right, guys. Thanks again. See you then. Bye bye. Jeez, I'm talking far too much. Could easily make videos five, six minutes long only, you know, but if you keep talking and put this on the video, it is always 15 or 20 minutes. There's no way to make them shorter. Oh, is this camera still on? Mm -hmm.